Well, hello, Bellingham. My name is Mark Allen. I'm an engineer. I'm an artist. I'm a volunteer at the Spark Museum, the Community Boating Center, and Bellingham Access Television. And I really love this town, and I love the people here. To show my love to Bellingham and the people here, I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to create a television miniseries of myself bicycling around Bellingham, Washington, and showing off some of my favorite spots and giving a historical narrative of the things I know about this town and the people. As an artist, I would like to return some of the gifts that Bellingham the people gave to me by taking some of my artworks I create here and leaving them out and about in town. If you see one, please take it and accept it as a tiny gesture of my love toward Bellingham, the people of Bellingham, and the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Now we're about ready to leave my humble little abode and turn west on East Victor. We are in the Columbia neighborhood of Inner North Bellingham. And since I am a slow bicyclist, let's electronically bump up the speed a little bit. Ahead of us, you'll see a private school called St. Paul's Academy. I'm very pleased to let you know that I was a volunteer judge at their science fair for a couple of years, which is a really wonderful experience. So thank you, St. Paul's. Coming up, we see the intersection to Northwest Avenue. As soon as the traffic clears, we're going to turn south here on Northwest. Northwest will turn into Elm Street, crosses Broadway, and turns into DuPont as we head toward downtown. And yes, there is a bicycle lane on this fleet. And yes, it is nice and flat. Pretty much all of the inner city neighborhoods, uh, Columbia, Letter Street, Birch Birchwood, and uh, Cornwall are pretty flat for easy bicycling. And yes, there are hills around the city, but most of them are in Outer Bellingham, South and East and way up North. They're great character building hills, but here in the inner part of the city, things are pretty flat. And by the way, even in my weakened state, having completed radiation treatment for prostate cancer, I still can get from my home to downtown in less than 15 minutes. And by the way, we just turned a little bit we are now on Elm Street. It is still very residential, maybe a few businesses, very comfortable, light traffic. And yes, some of you Bellingham series complain about the heavy traffic, but I really need to emphasize this is nothing compared to Seattle or even Portland or especially Vancouver, BC. Now, let's see, we are coming to the intersection of and just crossed Broadway. We're now on DuPont Avenue. It gets a little bit more dense here. And headed toward downtown. And off in the distance, if I'm correct, you could just begin to see the courthouse and the infamous Whatcom County Jail, and uh, there it is. And by the way, it would take me a full hour-long video to do a proper dissertation on the politics and the conversations surrounding that jail you see on your left. Now, more pleasantly than the jail, the tower you see in front of you is the old Bellingham City Hall built in the 1800s. Even though it's no longer used as a city hall, you are still welcome inside that building as it is owned by the Watkins Museum. Speaking of museums, you can't see it, but behind the building to your left is the Spark Museum, where I volunteer full-time as a docent, as an old radio repairman, and as a designer and builder of a 
exhibit, so come on in. Perhaps I will do a tour of that in a forthcoming video. There, by the way, is the old Bellingham City Hall and its beautiful architecture. So, let's move along. We are now headed through downtown towards the waterfront. And by the way, the waterfront was an extremely busy, thriving, working waterfront anchored by Georgia Pacific and their tissue paper plant, commonly called the Toilet Paper Factory. It closed in 2005 and the 137-acre site was dated to Bellingham for a grand total of $10. However, with the proviso that we, Bellingham, clean up their industrial toxic mess left behind by decades of paper mill operations. If you look very carefully in the distance to your right, you see six tall, thin structures. Those are the acid dissolving tanks to convert the wood chips to the pulp for paper. We are keeping them on site as part of the development of the site and they will be artistic sculptures. The development of the former Georgia Pacific site is the subject of ongoing discussions and planning and will start to soon manifest itself in the coming few years. Now, we are headed up a slight little inc incline toward the alley which will lead to the South Bay Trail. The white building you see on your right is the Bellingham Herald building. The Bellingham Herald used to occupy the entire building, but the stripped down version of the Herald now only occupies part of the second floor. The first floor is Western Washington University. The rest of the building is a variety of tenants. By the way, the Bellingham Herald is so stripped down that we now sometimes have to read about Bellingham in the Seattle Times or even the New York Times. Now we're in the alley, headed towards the trail. The building to your right, by the way, is the Depot Market. I will be discussing that in a forthcoming video. As you can see, there are fairly new apartment and condominium blocks on both sides of this part of the alley. This is a burgundy residential development area. And as we cross the street here, you see an area to your left, an old building. That is now an artist colony. Unfortunately, that's going to be torn down and turned into yet another apartment block, supposedly for students. If you have concerns about this, please carefully watch the scroll on your screen. There will be names of people you can call a conversation as they are principal players of the Seattle-based developer who purchased this land to your We are now on the beginning of the South Bay Trail. All this land to your left will be an apartment block, including the Hub Bicycle Shop, which you can now see briefly to your left. Now let's move along with this beautiful trail. The bay is to your right. Some fairly new apartment blocks to your left. And coming up, you see the first sculpture. I love you in a saw blade. Please take it if you see it and accept it as my love. Now let's electronically hurry things up a bit as we proceed along this trail. This trail was once part of a railroad that connected many small industrial communities, either mining or milling, to enable them to ship their product to the waterfront where it is loaded upon ships and barges to be sent by water 
sound to the rest of Washington and California and beyond. Please understand for a long time that Bellingham was not connected by road to anywhere else. But this railroad and waterway infrastructure were an extremely important component for our economic well-being and well-being during the 1800s. Now, of course, it's an extremely important component to our recreational infrastructure. By the way, Bellingham has an overabundance of parks thanks to our citizens constantly and diligently passing the periodic parks levy that's on our ballot. So thank you all here in Bellingham and providing us with such wonderful recreational assets that you and I are enjoying right now. So as we head toward the park, soon you will see a railroad crossing. And there will be another sculpture, I Love You, engraved in glass. The, the railroad tracks owned by Burlington Northern are very busy with freight trains and a very popular and scenic and track cascade passenger service connecting Eugene, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Bellingham, Washington, and Vancouver, British Columbia, and many points in between. It's a great way to see the coast of Washington. Now we are turning around the bend toward the entrance to Boulevard Park. Once a thriving part of the fish cannery, this park evolved over the years through civic concern of what would happen to this pristine waterfront real estate when the cannery and other industries closed and moved away. Thanks to many gifts, both in kind of land and money, the park was made possible. Here's a panoramic view of the bay from the park looking north. There's North Bellingham, there's the marina in the distance, and moving, swinging around the downtown Bellingham, the tall structures of Bellingham Towers, a 15 stories, the tallest building in Bellingham, and there's the old Bellingham City Hall. Now, if you look carefully in the distance, you see the hill on Lummi Island, the first peak, and the peak off in the distance to the right is Mount Constitution on beautiful Orcas Island. There's such wonderful views from Boulevard Park, which is the most popular park in the city, if not the entire county. Folks seeing this park from the windows of the end track Cascades train perhaps start to think about wanting to move up here. It does get quite tempting, especially when they see myself in my lighted clothing waving at them as they pass on by to destinations far away. This entire park is very busy, especially during sunsets. Perhaps the number one sunset viewing spot in much of Washington State. There you see myself pedaling my bicycle slowly and gently around the waterfront. By the way, that's Woods Coffee to the left. The area between Woods Coffee and the water is open to the public. As you can see, we're going to go there right now. Woods Coffee to your left. The water to your right. I'm taking it real slow, so that's why. We are now electronically jamming the paddle to the metal as we make our way around this beautiful park. And what you see ahead of you is a suspended walkway over water. Once again, this was part of the ever so important railway that connected these small industrial towns to the most vital working waterfront 
So, product can be transferred to boats to be shipped to Seattle, Portland, and points beyond. Right now, it's such a delightful recreational asset that we can all enjoy. The trail here is either graded metal or packed gravel. It's quite suitable for any bicyclist, but your roller skates and inline skaters may find quite a bit of a challenge. And if you do it, you'd be guaranteed to become the entertainment for the day or the evening. I've seen it happen. There, you just saw me wave. I waved at a couple of kayakers. I want to point out, yes, I do have a kayak at the Community Boating Center. Perhaps in a forthcoming video, I would like to shepherd you all aboard my kayak and show you what all of this looks like from the perspective of the water. Now, if we drown and the camera drowns, that may not be so nice, but that's part of the excitement. By the way, the water here it's a nice chilly 50 degrees. Yes, that's 5 and 0. 50 degrees, even in the height of summer. Despite the fact that the water is at 50 degrees, many Western Washington students still will swim and dive into that water from this spot, the Taylor Street Dock, the float you see on the right, and the rail railing, which they use as a diving platform. There's a nice covered seating area to your left to enjoy watching the wonderful divers from Western Washington University. You're not going to believe this, but this wonderful little path with the park benches is named Taylor Street. Hence, the Taylor Street Dock. The $350 a night hotel you see on your left. I would gently pass that on by since I am a poor boy. We are now working our way towards the Burlington Northern Railroad overpass from which you can wave at the passengers of the Amtrak Cascades train. And now you see the trail as viewed from the hill. You get an idea how the trail, the former railroad, was constructed over the water. And now the sculpture, Love Heals the Earth. Take it if you may. And here ends this journey. So come back next time, same channel. Bye bye.